Welcome to the Tony Robbins Podcast. Today, we're kicking off a series of episodes that are all about breaking through limitations and unleashing the power you have within yourself to create real, lasting change in your life. If that language sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you've attended Unleash the Power Within. UPW is a three and a half day event with Tony Robbins that's offered multiple times a year, both in the US and abroad. It's not like school or a business conference. It's certainly not like a typical personal growth seminar. It's a full blown experience that some have likened to a rock concert or an intense therapy session. Whatever it is you want to call it, it's epic. And for millions of people, it has been literally life changing. Did you know, for instance, that some of your deeply held beliefs are actually limiting you, holding you back, not pushing you forward? Or that you cannot just control your emotions, you can harness their power and take massive action. These are just some of the things that you learn at UPW and some of the topics that Tony delves into. We'll be exploring a lot of them in this podcast. Today on the show, we're excited to have the renowned author, presenter, and ultimate performance specialist, Joseph McClendon III, to talk about one of the most fascinating strategies you learn at UPW. It's called the Ultimate Success Formula. The Ultimate Success Formula is a four-step process that helps you take massive action to get what you really want. It could be a dramatic change in your own business, kickstarting a new career, or a much needed step you need to take in your relationship. Maybe you're finally committing to shedding extra pounds, maintaining a consistent level of strength and vitality. Chances are you know what it is. It's that one thing you know you just need to do, or at least do better than you are doing it today. And this is the system you can use to achieve that goal that you have. What's really cool about it is that you don't have to wait. You can really start using it right now at this exact moment. Also, since the next UPW offered in the US is right around the corner, we're going to be announcing a special offer for you to attend the San Jose event, which this year is November 10th through the 13th. So listen carefully for that. And now here's Joseph with his ultimate success formula. Hi, this is Annie Yorg, and I am here at UPW, Unleash the Power Within, in Dallas with Joseph McClendon III. Joseph is, by profession, a psychologist. By trade, he's an ultimate performance specialist. And here, he's the senior head trainer who works with Tony on stage, facilitating large events just like this one. Joseph actually just came off stage. <laughs> We're at day two. Uh, welcome, Joseph, to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I'd love to start maybe with just an idea of how you first started becoming involved with Tony. Well, I, I became involved with him in the beginning, much like other people do as well, or most people do. I went to a seminar, but this was back in the olden days, back in uh, 1985, I actually. So you really going to give that away? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was eight years old. No, I was... Uh, <laughs> and how I happened into that, it was a very, very low point in my life. Actually, I was doing well financially. I had a lot of things going for me in my life, but I had a passion that I wanted to do. I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a recording artist. And I knew I was good enough to do it, but I was afraid to quit my job. And I had programming from, from childhood that you had to keep a job and you had to stay in school. And even though I had already graduated from college and I'd already had a degree and had all those things, I was still working my job. I was playing in bands uh, to support my music having a relationship with my girlfriend, and I had also purchased 13, I actually had purchased in a year and a half time, 26 houses, because, yeah, I had 13 of them left, because I, I took, a, I went to a seminar and learned how to buy houses for money down, with the express reason that if I had these houses, then I could get residual income off of those, so I could quit my job, mm. and then I could pursue my music, mm -hmm. but... When I had, I had all these houses, had the income coming in from them, but my attitude was 13 houses, they were about worth about $100,000 each. My attitude was I'm, I'm $1.3 million in debt. I hate my life. I'm not doing my passion. And I freaked out. I was getting the money and I still couldn't quit my job and I didn't know why. And um, so just by luck, a friend of mine said, well, I've heard about this guy that can maybe can help you with this stuff. And he told me his name, but I didn't pay attention to it. And he said, you should go to the seminar. And I go, I already went to one seminar and look at what happened to me, you know, because I literally, that was the only seminar I'd gone to. And uh, so I went to Los Angeles and I went to, in those days, this UPW was called the Mind Revolution. Hmm. Tony was maybe 28, 29 years old, oh, I think. Wow. And I went there 
and I was in the back of the room, and I was depressed, and I was just out of it. And everybody else around was jumping around and having a good time and partying, and there was only maybe 500 people, if that many. And, uh, and I just wasn't into it. And I thought, you know, I'm out of here. I'm going to leave because I'm just not into it. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, staff, if you will, came up, big guy, he started talking to me, and he says, listen, you know, you know, how are you doing? You know, you look like you're troubled. And I said, well, you know, quite honestly, this, this, this. And I started regurgitating my story to him. But he was really kind and he was, he was, he was helpful. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this Tony guy really trains his staff well. Because this guy was giving me some suggestions and he was telling me, well, you ought to hang around because, you know, Tony will really help you with stuff. And Tony is an amazing, amazing guy and, and you know, it'll help you with stuff. And so he, he helped me and, and convinced me to stay and I did. And then uh, at one point he goes, and then one of the greatest things is, is when you do the fire walk, and I go, the what? Because I didn't know anything about it. He goes, yeah, when you do the fire walk. And I go, well, what do you mean the fire walk? And he goes, yeah. And his eyes get really big and he goes, at the end of this, we're going to lay out, uh, you know, 15 feet of hot coals and we're going to walk on them. And I was raised in church. <laughs> and, and I automatically thought, well, Satan's got to be in there somewhere. I'm not doing this. And then it flipped again. And then it's like, I'm out of here. As soon as this guy's gone, I'm out of here. And he saw that in him, and he goes, don't worry about it. You know, it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, and you, you don't have to do it. You know, you just observe, but you'll get much value out of it. And I thought, okay, okay. Well, and then I decide to stay again. Then he says, well, I got to go because I got some work to do. And he turns around to walk away, and he stops about five feet away, and he turns around and he goes, you seem like a really nice guy. Can I have your phone number? And at the time, now this is 1985, I thought to myself, you know, now what? Yeah. And I actually thought this was somebody hitting on me. <laughs> I swear to God. Fair enough. And yeah. I thought, you know, and I thought, and he, and he kind of saw that I wasn't really comfortable with that. And he goes, you know, we'll talk later. And he, and he leaves. He said, goes away. And uh, then the seminar starts, you know, all the dancing and all the stuff going on. And I'm standing there still sort of half one foot in and one foot out. And Tony's wife gets on the stage, and she she talks about how she was sitting where we were at the time, and you know, frustrated and all that stuff. And then uh, Tony came out, and then she walked on the fire, and it changed her life so much that she married the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my guy, here's my my husband, Tony Robbins. And Tony came out, and it was the guy that was talking to me. Oh, it was Tony. <laughs> it wasn't staff at all. It was Tony. And wow. and uh, then he had me at that, and he of course uh, I learned. I'm sorry. Straight up, he asked for your number straight up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Himself. Yeah, he was yeah. just trying to be he a friend. Knew. It was me yeah. freaking out, right? Yeah. And uh, so I uh, I stayed, and the rest is history. It literally that, w and I only did the one day. By the way, I didn't do this, the uh, the next UPW for several months. But just from what I learned from that one day changed my life. I went back, and literally within a couple of weeks, I quit my job. I just, you know, went through a bunch of changes in my life. I did wind up selling 90% of all those homes, and I moved to Los Angeles. I did get a recording deal with CBS Records uh, a couple years later, and uh, and grew from there. And then, uh, I guess it was in '90, uh, CBS, the company that I was with, sold to Sony, and I got kind of locked in that in a position that I didn't want to. And my mom became very, very ill, and I had to take care of her as well. And it was at that stage that I made the decision to switch careers. And um, I had, in between that time, Tony and I were friends, and I would go to the to workshops, and he asked me to, to uh, step in because of my background in psychology and, uh, and, uh, and work with some of the trainers and so on and so forth. So I became uh, the head trainer, training the trainers and working with the trainers. And then uh, he and I wrote our first book together. Uh, I became a bestseller in uh, uh, 89, I'm sorry, 86, mm -hmm. um, sorry, 96, forgive me, 96, and uh, and then since then we grew and grew and I uh, became the uh, senior head trainer and now I have the unbelievable honor, the privilege of working with Tony on stage and sharing his message and helping people change lives. Great. So I want to talk a little bit about what you spoke about today, day two, mm -hmm. uh, the ultimate su success formula. Can you explain a little bit about Absolutely, when, sure. what that is, where it comes from? Actually, that was day number one. We, we extended into today. Uh, day number one was, I'm sorry, that was day number two. Tony does day number one. Uh, and day number, uh, that, that is really what shifted my life uh, when I told you back there was learning this formula. And the ultimate success formula, as we jokingly say but it's the truth it's how to get whatever you want in life and it is a strategy to organize 
your, it's a process of organizing all the steps that you, you can, should, would take to get what you want. And ironically, they're the things that we do, we've always done, but we do them unconsciously. I'll, I'll tell you what they are in a second, but throughout our lives, anything that we've ever desired, that we wanted, that we finally got, if you look back, all these steps were in place in some way in, in, with regard to an emotion and regard to the actions that we took. And the steps are, they're, they're really quite simple, not necessarily easily, easy, but they're, they're definitely simple. Step number one is always to know your outcome, meaning know what you want and be as, have as much detail about that thing as possible. But that sounds so simple. But it's not. It, well, y yes and no. It, it's it's simple, not necessarily easy, because it requires you to dig deep inside yourself. Yeah. It, it requires you to do some research. It requires you to look at the thing that you want. And sometimes things come up that you don't like. Sometimes things come up that make you uncomfortable. Yeah. But also, obviously, through the process, you have to learn how to uh, to deal with those things. But we, I always say... You know, I grew up in a town in a place called Lancaster, California. And uh, there, it's a desert, it's flat. It's where they used to land the space shuttle, you know, out in Edwards Air Force Base. And it's flat, and you could drive for miles and miles once you got out of town with no stop signs. And two or three, four or five times a year, people would lose control of their car and run into telephone poles. And it would floor me. I'd go, a telephone pole is only this wide. Yeah. And they're 20 yards in between each other. Why do people hit the poles? And if they lived, they always said the same thing. I didn't want to hit the pole. The last thing I remember was the pole. And so it's because of what they're looking at. Our bodies respond to whatever they're looking at. They drive into the pole, even though they don't want to do it. What they're focused on, that becomes their outcome, and their body drives into it. So I use that as an example or as a metaphor, if you will. To, it's the same for the thing that you want. If you get clear on your outcome, what it is that you want, and you focus on that, and then we have processes that you learn at the UPW of how to refocus yourself back on that thing and get clear on exactly what that is, sure. then your body, much like driving into the pole, mm -hmm. will do whatever it takes to make that happen. And then it becomes automatic with you. And, and once that happens, then you don't have to, you know, force yourself to do it. That is when it becomes easy. A lot of people, too, think it's an intellectual process, but, you know, where focus goes, energy flows. It's really a full body experience. Absolutely. Right? It, it really is. I mean, it's, it's such a great point because, you know, people say mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, it is. Everything's connected. It's all together. So as the mind thinks and the thought process is just whatever we imagine and whatever we say, that's the entire thought process, not to oversimplify it. So if you're looking at something and saying these words, words then and that repetition with the energy that goes into it that becomes your reality and you go after it. you know you don't you don't have to think about um how you drive a car when you get in the car but you did when you first learned you had to focus on some things and you did it enough times so pretty soon it came became natural sure yeah but that's and that's a painful process in itself is getting out of autopilot right yeah, we live exactly. in our heads all day we're so used to doing things so easily that getting out of your comfort zone to that extent, yes. is very, very uncomfortable. Very well put. And that's one of the great things that Tony teaches, and he's such a master at it, is how to get out of that comfort zone, how to break that pattern. And not just intellectually, but do it in a way that becomes, I call it, your default. And he's just a master at, at teaching people to do that as well. So anything else about the success program? Oh, sure. Uh, step number two sure. is, is um, to know your reasons why. Why human beings do amazing things when they have a strong enough reason why. Um, Jim Rohn used to say that hows come second, whys come first. People do things that are unresourceful, smoke cigarettes and, you know, drink alcohol and do behavior. things like that. Yeah. But they have a reason why, and their why is so strong inside of them. So what we help people do at the UPW as well is to get in touch with their reason why. People say, well, I want to make more money. and But it, it, they don't want to just make more money. The reason that they want to make more money is so that they can you know, have a better lifestyle freedom or they can or, freedom and build a financial wall around their family, you know, send their kids to a special school or whatever. But those are the things that once they realize that, that's what, the, what you were talking about before. The emotion comes out. And once the emotion comes out and it's attached to that thing that you want, just like, again, I keep going back to driving into the pole, emotion is emotion, good or bad. And when you attach emotion to the thing that you're looking at, you get locked into it. They're scared when they're looking at the pole, but that's emotion, and it locks them in. So if you, if you get somebody to say, here's what, what I want, 
and I'm focused on that, and then you cause them to pull up the emotion of why they want it, their children or security or whatever it is, then it locks them in as well. Yeah. That's step number two. And again, in all this stuff, it's not just conversation we have with people. We pride ourselves on we're going to show you something, we're going to tell you something, and then you're going to do it. So we're going to get a result at the, at the workshop and then give you the tools so you can have it outside of here. And, of course, the, the third step is the one that seems obvious, but it's not uh, the thing that people uh, it tend to know right away, and that is something called massive action. You've got to take not a little bit of action, but you've got to take massive, massive action. And that means don't just go to the gym for a week you know, and work out mildly. You've got to go and work out like crazy while you're doing these things. But what happens is, is those things that are difficult in the very beginning very, very quickly become natural, and you crave it. So that massive action starts to become the thing that you crave doing. And that's those three things attached together are the things that make you get up early, stay up late, do the hard stuff, and crave wanting to do those things. Once those are in place and you're doing that <clears throat> and you're along the, those roads, step number four is to notice what you're getting, is to, is to see am I getting closer to my goal or further away. Because oftentimes just because you're taking action, things can distract you and knock you off course and, and make you focus on something else for maybe not for uh, not as much time as you need to focus on here or more time on there. And so what happens is we get off course and we don't realize it. And if you get off course just one degree in the very beginning, then you'll be way off course by the time you get to where you think you're going to be. So you've got to notice what you're getting. And then if you notice what you're getting, I always say this to people, if you notice what you're getting and you're on course and you're doing great, celebrate. Celebrate you know, every yeah. Praise your shell, yourself. Give yourself a personal high five. Whatever, and go. I freaking rock. Whatever it takes. And this is really important. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say too because a lot of people who are here uh, for this event and who are listening today, I mean, they consider themselves as they should as achievers. Yeah, yeah. And one yeah. thing that achievers a lot of them have, have in common is they're really hard on themselves. Right, so they don't take the time to to step back and acknowledge where they came from and where they're at today, even if it's not quite at their goal, and then to celebrate that. Yeah, or I, I beat them up really bad on that one. I, I accuse them of. Don't worry, I help them as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I accuse them of being what I call members of the self beaters club, and and the reason I do that, and I say, you know, I, I beat them up about them, is I want them to get how damaging that is to them, and then I give them the solution on that, and we play around a lot, and people get it that wait a minute. I have to do this. This is something that is part of my regime. And I would praise my child, even though they didn't get it right. So I need to do that to myself. And then we turn it into a ritual, if you will, that they get used to it. That they get you even in there, and then they come outside of the, there as well, appreciating themselves and being their fan. Because that, in anything with a nervous system, and even plants, if you praise them, they grow. And so when somebody does something, even if they fail, and you go, well, at least you did something. It's a great job then their nervous system learns, oh, wait, I'm just going to do more and more of it so they grow from there. So if they notice that they're not going where they're, where, or not headed in the direction that they want to, if they're off course, obviously praise yourself for having caught yourself. But then step number five is to change your approach. Adjust yourself to get yourself back in because sometimes the thing that you're doing may get some results for a while, but then that starts to taper off. And some people, they hit a plateau and then they go, oh, this isn't working, and they stop. Or they'll, they're achievers. They, they work and, and effort even more and more, and they get more and more frustrated and more and more overwhelmed, and then they stop, and they get distracted and they do something else. Instead, catch yourself and go, and we always say get a coach, get a mentor or some, something that's going to go, okay, take a deep breath, step back for a minute, let's take a look, let's assess what, you, what you've done, and let's change our approach and then move in that direction. And that's it. That's the formula. And when you do that formula, like for me, when I got that, it's like having... Um, it's like having the puzzle pieces to this magnificent puzzle. And you're able to just go, okay, whatever you want in your life. And that's what they leave the UPW with. I mean, one of the many, many things, but um, is, is that they have this system, this formula. So whatever they want in their lives, whenever they go after anything in their lives, they just go, okay, wait a minute, let me just go and go, okay, let me define my outcome, what exactly what I want, and then let me define exactly why I'm doing this. Let me get emotional about this. And then here's the action that I'm going to take, and then we set a schedule for doing that. And then as I go up, here's my schedule for checking in and seeing how I'm, I'm doing, and here's how I'm going to adjust. You do that, 
Life's good. <laughs> so, Joseph, one of the things that I've noticed here at UPW is that there seem to be people from all walks of life, right? Yeah. It's extremely diverse. Um, there's something about the energy in the room, too, that's unbelievable. It's like nothing I've ever seen. Everybody is here to support each other. Um, but UPW is a very individual journey. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And what I was sort of wondering was what types of people do you think – are prime for this kind of event? Mm -hmm. Great question. You're absolutely right. There are all walks of, of people, you know, all religions, all races, all ages. I mean, there's kids there, there's children there, and they're also, you know, 80, 90 year olds uh, here as well, and everything in between. Uh, and, you know, the easy answer is, is it's for everybody because it's personal development and, and everybody, uh, we share the same type of nervous system. But I would say that it's prime for these types of people. Number one, Achievers and people that that know that you know that they 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 have already achieved a lot and want to achieve more, and or people that that want to they're not at that level yet but they want to and they have the desire already to go for more. Obviously, it's for everybody, but those types of people tend to be the ones that um, that I, I don't want to say benefit the most, but those are the ones that tend to uh, to th this being the the, the biggest shift in their life at that career. Now, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't restrict it to only those people. I would say anybody, if you have a desire to make something happen in your life, then this is for you. This is something that um, we create a community of people, and that's really important as, as well, because we're not an island, and any, everything that we do is going to involve other people. So we learn how to interact with other people and so on and so forth. But I would say, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily like to use the word achievers, the people that were, are going forward and you know that you want to make a better version of yourself, this is the place to do it. So we have a UPW coming up. Yes. It's in San mm -hmm. Jose. Mm -hmm. um, I heard there's a special offer. 